Okay, people, the few minutes have gone by, and uh, we're going to take care of the second objective of 3.6. Not a word problem, so we can breathe a sigh of relief. We are taking a formula and solving it for a specified variable. A formula is an equation. It has an equal sign. A formula is a special equation that describes a relationship between two or more variables. Now, up on the board here, I'm going to highlight what I believe to be three key considerations that we need to follow when we're solving a formula for a specified variable. As I talk about each one of these steps, I'm going to have Kristen come over here and kind of spotlight a particular kind of a formula that I'm going to be making reference to. So let's go to step one. If the formula that you are looking at, if it contains a fraction, the very first thing that we do is eliminate that fraction by multiplying both sides of that formula by its LCD. Its LCD will be whatever its denominator is. Let me just read it again. If the formula contains a fraction, we're going to eliminate that fraction that is not if I feel like it. That's a mandate. That's a must. We will eliminate the fraction by multiplying both sides of that formula by its LCD. Now we're just going to come over here. I'm not going to do problem number two yet, but I want you to look at number two. It doesn't matter what this formula is for. V is equal to one-third times pi times radius squared times height. One-third pi r squared h. Notice that number two contains a fraction. The very first step that we will do when we take this formula and solve it for h because this formula contains a fraction, we're going to eliminate that fraction right away. First step. And we're going to eliminate it by bracketing the left and bracketing the right and multiplying both sides by the LCD, which is 3. That will be the first step that we'll do. Now back over here. Step number 2. Key truth, we eliminate unwanted factors by division. We eliminate unwanted factors by division. I'm going to ask you to look at number one. We just came from this formula. But now this is telling us to solve I is equal to PRT for R. In other words, we need to take this formula and we need to get R alone. We need to solve it for R. Now I want you to look at this expression that's on the right-hand side. This is one term one term on the right-hand side. And within this one term, the P, the R, and the T are factors. There's a time sign here. There's a time sign there. Factors are joined together by multiplication signs. 
Now, if we want to solve this formula for R, then that means we're going to have to eliminate the P and the T. And because the P, the R, and the T are factors, we want the factor R to remain. We want to eliminate the factor of P and the factor of T. That P and that T are unwanted factors. And the way we eliminate unwanted factors is by dividing. So in a moment, we're going to divide when we do number one. Now let me go to number three. Third truth. Eliminate unwanted terms by additive inverse or opposites. Eliminate unwanted terms by performing additive inverse or opposites. Let's go over here to this bottom one. Number three would apply as well, but I'm going to ask you to look at number four. Y is equal to MX plus B. We're going to be solving it for M. We're going to be solving it for him. Now, M is a part of the term MX. And B is another term. If we are asked to solve this formula for M, this term right here of B, we're going to have to eliminate it. Because if we don't eliminate it, we'll never get M alone. This B is just as much a term as MX is a term. However, MX contains the very letter that we need to solve for. The other term, B, is an unwanted term. We can't have this term on this side. As long as it's there, he's never going to get alone. Therefore, we're going to have to get rid of that B. And because that B is an unwanted term, we're going to have to get rid of that B by its opposite, by using opposites. So those are the three truths. Now, we're going to start with number one, and here's what number one is asking us to do. Solve I is equal to PRT. We want to solve it for R. We want to get R alone. There is only one term on this side, and this one term is made up of the factors P, R, T. To get R by itself, we've got to eliminate this factor of P and this factor of T. And according to step two over there, we eliminate unwanted factors by dividing. So here we go. We're going to divide. And we're going to divide by those unwanted factors. We're going to divide this side by P. Stop there for a second. Notice the P's will cancel out. But he's also unwanted. So we're going to divide by T as well. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. He'll be the only thing that's left. But like any equation, whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. So we're going to divide this side by PT as well. Bring down the equal sign. Gone. Gone. He has arrived by himself. And that's going to be equal to, just recopy this. Done. We have solved the formula for simple interest for rate. That's number one. Okay. Let's go to number two. Solve V. 
is equal to one third pi r squared times h for h. Step number one, like I already mentioned. If a formula contains a fraction, you must get rid of that fraction first. We get rid of it by multiplying both sides of that formula by the least common denominator of this fraction. And the least common denominator is 3, that denominator. You don't have to go any higher. It's 3. So let me get rid of that too so we don't get confused with it. Multiply the left by the LCD of 3 and the right by the 3. Left hand side, multiply the 3 times V. Pretty. Multiply the right hand side by 3. Just this little garage is going to get treated. Don't touch pi r squared h, just the fraction. They cross cancel to ones. And we're left with 1 times 1 times this, and that's this. And now with our eye on the prize, we want to solve it for h. This is one term. Just like he was one term. He's one term. There's a time sign there, and there's a time sign there. We want to solve it for h. The factor of pi has to go, and the factor of r squared needs to go. And because these are unwanted factors, divide over pi r squared over pi r squared. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. Hello. 3v over pi r squared. Done. Yes, you have to watch the video. And yes, you need to do the assignment. You'll get it, but you got to do it. Three. Four X for him. He's a term. He's a term joined by a plus sign. But we're not ready to do anything with this term yet because this term contains the very letter that we need to solve for. We got to get rid of him. He is a term and he is an unwanted term. So to get rid of this unwanted term, perform its opposite to it. Write its opposite below it, because we got to get rid of him. That term. We don't monkey with him yet, because this term contains the letter that we want to solve for. You go to the other term that doesn't contain that letter that we want to solve for. Get rid of him. Opposite. N, bring him down, is equal to, now we're going to rewrite this. This is written vertically. We're going to write it horizontally, going across. And we're going to begin with the top term, minus the bottom one. That's ordinarily the way that we do it. If you wanted to begin with the negative 1by first and then plus c, fine but we ordinarily write it from top down to bottom horizontally. Now go back over here. We have one term, and that one term consists of 
factor A and factor X. We want X alone. Therefore, we have to get rid of this unwanted factor. Unwanted factor, divide. Same. And we have it. X is equal to C minus BY, the whole kit and caboodle over A. Done. Four. I need him. He's part of the term called MX. We got a lingering term over here. We've already spoken about him. He's got to go. Just like BY left. B goes first, then we'll deal with this term. Got to go. Unwanted term. He's a term. He's not a factor. There's a plus sign there. He's a term. Get rid of him by opposite. This left-hand side, it's written vertically. Let's write it horizontally, beginning with Y. The right-hand side, gone. Mx is left. We need m. We need the slope. We need m. we got to get rid of the x. This is one term, and it consists of two factors. There's a time sign in between them. Divide. Divide. m is equal to y minus b over x. Done. Now I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more. A is equal to one half H times the quantity of A plus B. Now people, I'm going to try and squeeze in this one and this one again. We're going to do this one twice. The first time around, we're going to solve it for H. Now, item number one, you and I see a fraction. Bracket. Both sides, right away. Got to get rid of that fraction. Maybe make this one just a little bit wider to tuck everything. Multiply both sides by the common denominator of two. Left-hand side, right-hand side, just this little piece of the garage. One times one times H, we're left with H times the quantity of A plus B. Now, here's the reason why we definitely want to do this one. Notice what we want to solve for H. A number of students will look at this part of the equation, this stage of the process, and they'll say, this looks like the distributive. It would be. There's no doubt about it. But let me do something to this. Let me distribute for a minute so that you can see that it'll be the wrong step. We can't do that step because our goal is to solve this for H. And if I distribute by H, I'm then coming up with two terms of which both contain the letter that I need to solve for. We'll never be able to solve it for H with that kind of a posture. You might say, well, I'll move one of them over to the other side. What is that going to help? you're still going to have two terms that contain the very letter that we need to solve for. So, in this case, because we're solving for H, 
you can't distribute. What we are going to have to do is something much quicker. There's a time sign there. That means H is a factor. And that means this entire quantity of A plus B is a factor. There's a time sign in between them. He's a factor. And this whole kit and caboodle right here is a factor. We want to get rid of that factor. He's unwanted. If we can get rid of him, we'll have H. And we're going to get rid of him. Gone. Hello. Goodbye. They cancel. Two, uppercase letter A over little a plus little b, done. You can't distribute. You'd end up with two terms that contain the h. Can't do that. But now I'm going to quickly erase. Let's say we're going to solve it for b. Step number one. You still got to get rid of the fraction. That's why I left it up there. We'll get this. Now the emphasis is on him. Not him. Him. Now you may distribute. There is another way, but we'll distribute. It's a nice way. He's the term that contains the letter we need. He's the term that happens to be on the same side as him. He's an unwanted term. He's got to go. Unwanted terms, opposite. Top minus bottom equals, now we can get B. Get rid of H. He's an unwanted factor. We have one term, time sign in between. Get rid of that unwanted factor by dividing there and by dividing there. And we'll get B is equal to 2 uppercase A minus little h times little a over little h. And believe it or not, you're done. I'm going to make one comment before we shut this video off. If you're thinking that you can cancel out those h's, you cannot cancel out those h's for this reason. This h is part of of the term HA. And you can't cancel a term with a factor. Now, if there would have been a time sign right there, then we could have whitewashed away the H's. But there's not a time sign. There's a subtraction sign that separates this term from this term. This HA is part of a term. This H down in the denominator is a factor. And you can't cancel a factor with a term. He's done. He's finished. And we're finished. We're finished with 3-6. There'll just be one other thing that we need to look at, 3-7, because 3-8 is already in the anthology of videos. So when we resume, we'll take care and finish up 3-7 and finish chapter 3. Thanks a lot for taking a look at it. Goodbye.